Welcome back. If you've gotten engaged recently, you're probably hearing the same question over and over. When's the big day? And if you haven't set a date yet, it can be pretty annoying and maybe even panic inducing to constantly answer, I don't know, or we're still figuring it out. So today, I'm here to give you a step-by-step -step guide to setting a wedding date. Now, before we get started, it's important to know that the phrase setting a date is actually code for booking a wedding venue. While you may have a few desired dates in mind, until you've actually signed a contract with the venue, you haven't officially set a date yet. Think of signing your venue contract as the key that unlocks the rest of your wedding planning experience. You can't hire wedding vendors, invite guests, or do much else until you've officially picked your wedding date and nailed things down with the venue you'll have to decide if you want to have a long or short engagement. According to the Knott's Real Wedding Study, the average length of an engagement is 16 months, and more than half of couples are engaged for over one year. Now, there are lots of advantages to a longer engagement. You'll have your pick of venues and vendors, be able to order attire without rushing, and more. But if you want to get married like yesterday and thrive under pressure, a shorter engagement may be right for you. Personally, I recommend being engaged for at least a year so you'll have plenty of time to enjoy being engaged and planning your wedding. Now, you might already have a date in mind. Maybe you want to get married on the anniversary of your first kiss or a symbolic date like 11-11. Certain cultures also have auspicious dates that are desirable for weddings. While already having an idea of your perfect wedding date is great and can be super romantic, you might find fewer available venues and vendor options, especially if your dream date is less than a year away. You'll have to decide what's more important to you, having your wedding on a specific date or having your choice of wedding venues and vendors. The more flexible you can be with the dates, the more options you'll have. So, instead of having a specific date in mind, you might instead choose a month or a season to narrow down the calendar, but still give yourself some wiggle room. Being strategic about choosing your wedding date can actually save you some money. Peak wedding season runs from late spring through the fall. October is actually the most popular month, and most weddings take place on Saturdays. Venues and vendors sometimes offer savings during months like January, March, April, and November, which is known as off-peak season. And if you're willing to host your wedding on a Friday or a Sunday or even a weekday, you might also benefit from some savings. You might also decide to host your wedding on a holiday weekend. There are so many advantages to hosting a holiday wedding, specifically if you'd like to incorporate themed decor or food. Hello heart themed wedding on Valentine's Day. Another plus, some holidays fall on long weekends, which might make it easier for out of town guests to attend. On the flip side, some guests may already have long-standing travel plans for a holiday weekend and won't be able to come. While it's a great idea to have some preferred dates in mind, it's equally, if not more important, to know which dates won't work. Be sure to check the calendar to learn when major sporting events, graduations, festivals, or other events are taking place in your chosen location. These big events may mean sold-out hotels, high airfares, and heavy traffic, and you don't want to deal with that during your wedding weekend. You'll also want to talk to your closest loved ones to see if there are any dates that absolutely won't work for them. For example, if your dad has an annual work conference that he simply can't miss or another wedding in the family, you'll want to take note. There may be other dates you'll want to avoid too. No matter what your career, you probably have your own crunch time at work, so don't marry then. You'll either be stressed or find it difficult to take off for your honeymoon. Also. Your religion may dictate some times of the year or even days of the week that are off limits. Now that you have a few dates in mind, you can start researching wedding venues. One of the first questions you must ask a potential venue is about their availability. For example, you could say, we're hoping to get married in May of 2025 and are particularly targeting these dates. Do you have any availability during this time? If a venue is completely booked during your chosen season or dates, you won't be able to move on. However, if you fall in love with a particular venue, you might want to take another look at the calendar to see if there are dates that will work for everyone. As we talked about, flexibility can be key here, so don't discount weekdays or off-season dates. We've got a video on choosing a wedding venue coming up soon, so definitely subscribe to our channel and check that out. So now you're ready to set a date. 
Once you've officially set your wedding date, head over to The Knot and create your personalized checklist so you'll know what tasks to tackle and when. And feel free to ask questions or share your wedding date in the comments below. To learn more about the next steps of wedding planning, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Now on the next episode, it's time for the fun stuff, choosing your wedding style. Happy planning and see you soon.